let's go inside and see. The building looks quite uh, old. Of course, it's very old. So let's see. So we are going to the independent side. And the first thing you will need to know is that you have to remove your shoes. So guys, we are continuing the, the series now. This time around, I want to take you guys to that side there, okay? There are a lot of tourist attractions in that place there. So, and a lot of history. So I'm going to take you there. But while coming just along the roadside here, I saw uh, something that could be historical. But if you are new, make sure you subscribe. And uh, if you have not watched the other Melaka series, just go and check the channel now and you will see the videos, okay? So subscribe, this is a happy family and I have more content to give you. If you are a returning subscriber, make sure you hit notification bell so that you can always notify it anytime I upload a new video. Thank you so much for staying tuned with me. So let's start touring this place. It's gonna be a wonderful one. So you can see there are a lot of people visiting this place. So many people. And uh, let me just show you guys around. I saw that uh, convent 1905 you understand and then you can see you can see you can see so let's just go front and see what we have so while coming along the road i just saw this uh yeah it's just close to the tourist area bazaar craft tagan is handicraft bazaar so if you want to get your handicraft stuff you can get it there yes so let's go let's go let's go yeah so you can see the entrance here is actually very secured with some extent i think this i don't know but okay let's just go inside anyways so okay you cannot drive in actually it's just humans and uh, i can see that independent memorial let's go inside and i will show you guys what you need to see okay the coconut people are here and uh, a lot of things you can get here the toys the heart yeah, they are shopping. I'm videoing. So at this time, you can see a lot of people are here, you know, having fun and enjoying themselves. Both the locals, international, everybody is here. This place is actually a uh, kind of historical city. And that's what I heard, that it's an historical city. And I think there are a lot of historical stuff here. This is a proclamation of independence uh, uh, memorial. Proclamation of independence memorial. That's Memorial Pengis, Pengis City Rand. Kemadekan. Okay, that's why they used to say Madeka, right? So Madeka is like the one they use for Independence Day or something. Hari something. Oh, that's very great. So yes, I don't know. It seems this one is not open. I'm not sure it's open. But I hope I can read what is there. <laughs> I can see the, the armor tank. But I think it's just for history. So okay, it's still open actually. So this is like their uh, Independence Memorial you know, trying to remember when they actually got independence. That's when Malaysia got their independence. So those that are interested in the educational aspects, let us try to go inside. So we are going to the independence side. And the first thing you will need to know is that you have to remove your shoes. Okay. Remove your shoes. Okay. So I've removed my shoes. Holding now. So I have to take my temperature. Uh, okay. Five. Thank you so much. 35.7. Okay, so what do we have here? This is the Museum for the Independence of Malaysia. You can see, uh, this is the first thing you will see. The Board of Information here. The Proclamation of Independence on 20 February 1956 in Bandar Hilir was a milestone in the history of the country. To commemorate this historic event, the state government of Melaka has chosen a building opposite sides, the Bandar Hilir field, to be the Proclamation of Independence Memorial. Okay, so Madaka, Malaka Dulu Dulu, Malaka in the dim and distant past. Like I told you guys, Malaka is actually an historical uh, city here in Malaysia. Malaka Dulu Dulu, Memarpakan Bahan, Akip Tenkang, Malaka Pada, Abad K15, Dan 16, Sepiti, Macrofilem. Tabitan Dan Gamba, okay. Melaka in the dim and distant past exhibits archival collections in the 15th and 16th centuries, such as microfilms, publications, and photographs. These collections were acquired locally and abroad, such as United Kingdom and India. Oh, 
Among the exhibits are laws of Sultan Mahmoud Shah of Melaka, Mahun notes, and Franco's Valentine's book and photograph of Melaka in the 16th century. Okay, so this is an history of Melaka in the dim and distant past. Okay, okay, this is just history, history, history. Still more information, Melaka in the dis dim and distant uh, past. What do we have here? The Malays led their own way of life, replete with their own economic, social, political, and administrative system. Wow. The Malay polity had a long history of contact with traders and travelers, especially those from Arab, uh, China, India, and the Malay archipelago. The success was achieved because of the efficiency of the administrators and nobles in managing the nation. The Malay state had an efficient system of administration and laws. For example, Melaka Maritime Laws, Keda Laws, Pahang Penal Laws, Johor Constitution, and Teranganu Constitution. Mm. Besides these accomplishments, the Malays have also produced innumerable manuscripts in various fields such as history, politics, language, and literature. This is beautiful. This is really, really beautiful. So this is a picture to uh, illustrate the Malay dominance. You can see that's the uh, cultural Malay attire, and they've actually been in power or civilized right from time. You can see some of the states, Pahang, Keda, Terengganu, Kelantan. Oh, I would love to go to all these places. So Kelantan, this is Negeri Sembilan, Selangor, Perak. So these are the history, these are their leaders. I saw this beautiful stuff. These are their leaders. So Malaysia actually came from the kind of royal kind of something setting. That's why they still have kings and here in Malaysia, uh, Royal, royalty is actually very powerful, you know, and I think that's the secret of their peace in this country. So actually the Malays, Indians, and Chinese set up their own political party. Okay, among the goal to establish the political parties were to achieve independence, develop the economy, foster unity, and so on. So in December 1st, 1951, uh, they actually elected members of the Municipal Council of Georgetown, okay, in Penang. And that continued until they got independence on the 31st August 1957 because they cooperated together, both the Malay, the Chinese, and Indians. And that is why Malaysia is known for her uh, multicultural kind of spirit. So guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. In continuation, okay, of our Malacca uh, information, there are a lot of things to show you. So the last time you saw the, the information about their independence, so here I just came and I saw this information here. I want to talk about that building you are seeing there, okay? That building you are seeing right there. So I'm going to read some information about how that building came to be. So actually, the, the Portuguese used forced labor to construct... Uh, okay, let me start from the beginning. Porta in Portuguese means port, okay? Porta in Portuguese means port. So we're talking about Porta de Santiago. Porta in Portuguese means port. Porta de Santiago the, was, one of the, was one of the four main gateways into the Portuguese uh, fortress of Afamosa, the leader of the Portuguese army that conquered Melaka in, 19, in 1511, Alfonso de Albuquerque, started the construction of Afamosa in, in 1512 due to the frequent attacks from Sultan Mahmud Shah's followers, in addition to those from Ake and Johor, for over a century, guys. That's over 100 years. The Portuguese used forced labor to construct this parish, that one you are seeing there. They use forced labor to construct it. It actually surrounds the Melaka Hill, okay, with three meter thick walls using parts from demolished palaces, wow, mosque, and loyal mausoleums. A 40 meter high watchtower was also built in the northwest corner of the fortress. It's a good history. So it was actually demolished for fear that it might be used against them after Melaka was handed back to the Dutch. However, the British resident in Melaka, William Farku, Farkuha, in 1807 used gunpowder to blow up the fort. However, Lord Minto and Sir Stamford Raffles intervened to stop their countrymen from totally destroying it. Nevertheless, only Porta de Santiago and the surrounding houses were spared. Wow. Afamosa is one of the oldest surviving European architectural remains in the whole of Asia. That's one you are seeing there. So it's a great history and it's good to know that um, Malaysia has actually gone through a lot, you know, over the years. So one thing about history I like is that you will actually understand and appreciate a country when you know about their history. You get the point now? No country just came out 
just like that. Maybe some, but most of the countries, you know, they, are, they were actually colonized before. Like Malaysia was colonized by the British, but it's a very great thing to see that they were able to, you know, rise up and uh, build themselves a beautiful country despite all those uh, struggles. So the struggle is real, and hopefully other countries that uh, are still struggling and have not been able to actually uh, do something reasonable for themselves, I think this should be a uh, great challenge for them. So let me just show you the, 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 what do you call it now? I forgot the name again. So let's go inside and see. The building looks quite uh, old. Of course, it's very old. So let's see. This was Warisan Kembangsa. 2005. Maybe they did some work in 2005. I don't know. Okay. Wow, it's just like a cave. I don't know. You can see some caves. It's good. Okay. So actually, this is the remaining part of ancient fortress of Malacca, built by Alfonso de Albuquerque and by him named Famosa. Okay. That's why they call it a Famosa. Okay. I know. I now understand why it is called a famosa. So going up now is a very stressful situation. But let's try. I know not where I'm going now, but I am just going. There's a very tall building, the church. Yeah, before that you can see a lot of things to buy outside just down here this one is the main journey guys it's so 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 far you have to walk and get tired because I'm already tired and these tears are quite critical I wonder when I'm gonna to get to where I'm going to up there but let's just try don't give up in life It's not funny actually. It's far. Can you guys see where I'm coming from? Can you imagine? All the way from there, guys. And it seems the weather is getting a little bit cool. Maybe rain wants to fall. I don't know. Trees are shaking and all that. So let's just go and see the history. I think it will be a quick one. There are a lot of history here. This, yeah. I'm going to say basically again. There are a lot of history here, but. Until I go up before I know what's really there. At the entrance here also at the top, you can get stuffs. You can get some stuff you want to get. Okay, just take a look at it. Look so tall. Too old. A kike. It's what we call a kike building. It's just preserves the history. I don't know where my friends are. Okay, where do we start from? Should we start from here? Okay, let's start from here. Yeah, so guys, welcome to St. Paul's Church in Malacca here. It's actually one of the major uh, city attractions in Malacca. The ruins of St. Paul's Church are the summit of St. Paul's Hill. That's why you can see it's actually a hill. You have to really uh, exercise well before you get there. Built on the site of the last Malaccan Sultan's Istana Palace, it was constructed by Portuguese Fidalgo, okay, a nobleman, Captain uh, Duarte Coelho, in gratitude to the Virgin Mary for saving his life during a storm at sea, okay. And this place is actually roofless and covered in fence. Uh, even though it has been in ruins for more than 150 years, it is still beautiful, as you can see, a breezy sanctuary, and uh, it's set near the remains of a famosa thoughts that i showed you just down below so let's enjoy 
Okay, and this is it. Trying to read. The slab marks the grave of Frau Van Redbeck, wife of John Van Redbeck, founder of Cape Colony. The original gravestone was removed to Cape Town in 1915. I just like the way they keep history, basically, even though I don't have much idea of the place. So you can see it's like a church. They are having some service here. So beautiful. Okay, guys, so I hope you have enjoyed the video for today. Rain is about to fall and there are more things in Malacca I'm going to show you. So just stay tuned for the next episode. And yes, I'll see you in the next episode. If today is your first time of locating the channel, just ensure you what? Subscribe and stay tuned because this channel is a happy family and I have more and more interesting content for you guys.